Coach, thank you for being here. It's awesome to be here. It's my pleasure. Yes, and you are known for your tenure as the basketball coach of University of Colorado, where you contributed significantly to the program's history, winning 184 games and appearing in two NCAA championship tournament. Walk us through your coaching career and highlight some of the most memorable, you know, milestones and wins and yeah. victories. So I was at University of Colorado from uh, 93 until 2007. And of course, uh, after t being there two and a half years, I took over the program as a head coach and Colorado um, was dormant in the NCAA tournament, hadn't gone for nearly 30 years. Right. And, uh, but we had some talent. They just needed a little more motivation and need to understand what it meant to, to work hard. And, and so we did some things in the preseason to, to really mold a, a group of young men that, that went on to, to appear in the NCAA tournament for the first time, as I said, in nearly 30 years and, and had great success. We ended up beating uh, uh, Indiana first round and losing the second wow. round to North Carolina. So you earned the title, the general, during your coaching <laughs> tenure. Um, tell me how you got that moniker and what was the story behind it. I know and I read that you actually required your players to go to <laughs> etiquette classes and uh, tell me a little bit more about that and how you how they came up with that moniker for you. Well, I think um, the first reason was because of my last name being Patton. Right. Uh, but then I was always a disciplinarian. I was known as a disciplinarian coach and, and we did a number of things to try to motivate our guys uh, to, to do more, be more. Uh, so we had an etiquette class for our guys before the season started. Uh, we visited five churches as a team. Um, and we, you were big on making sure that they actually um, serve the community as well, which I think is remarkable. No question. Uh, I thought it was important that our, our players learn to give back to the right. community. Um, I, I posed a question to the team one day is, what have we done for the University of Colorado? And, and then I went on to identify all the things that the University of Colorado had done for us and for them in terms of providing an education, uh, providing the best Nike uh, apparel. Uh, we, we got to see the world. I mean, our teams traveled all over the world to, to play games. And I thought it was time that our, our players understood that now it's time for us to try to give back and to give back in our effort and our attitude. Well, that's amazing. You know, I actually got to meet the real general uh, um, the deceased uh, now, uh, Coach Bobby Knight, you know, he was known as a general as well. And, and we became um, good golfing buddies when he joined. He left Indiana, he came to Texas Tech in the Big 12 and uh, had an opportunity to, to pick his brain and play a lot of golf with him. Coach, in your experience, what is the most critical trait or traits that differentiates a superstar athlete from the rest? You know, great question, Rizal. I, I think the biggest thing is is there takes a great deal of humility, right? Um, but a, also uh, also a great deal of confidence and an un, unwillingness to uh, give in to to pressure, uh, a desire to try to outwork the next guy. I've always believed that I'm no smarter than the next guy, but I will try to outwork him. And that was a message I wanted to give to our players is just be willing to try to outwork the next guy. Yeah. Getting up early, staying up later, doing more than your opponent is willing to do. Humility and confidence together, that's not in, an easy thing to do, right? Or just, that, that's not an easy trait to be confident yet humble, but that is you. You are that way, Coach. I mean, I've known you since, what, 2000 and... 2002. 2002. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that was the first time that I've met you. So I've always admired that about you. Well, thank you. You know, I give a lot of credit, one, to, uh, to my faith uh, in God, but also I was, I was blessed to have a phenomenal martial arts instructor. Um, I trained uh, in Taekwondo uh, starting in the ninth grade and competed until I was 34 years old. And, um, but I remember getting my black belt as a senior in high school and my instructor, Master Shin Young Kong said, 
To become a black belt means you should become a better person. And those words rang loud, uh, loudly in my ear, and I, I've always tried to remember that you should try to become a better person. And I imagine that discipline is really something that is very important um, <laughs> as a coach and yeah. as an athlete, right? I mean, discipline in all aspects of, of your life and your everyday routine. Yeah, I, I just believe a life that is undisciplined uh, will we'll have too many roller coaster rides. There'll be some highs, too many highs, too many lows, just because of the lack of discipline and uh, not keeping a, a steady keel. Right. So it's been a year since you stepped away from coaching. Mm -hmm. What keeps you busy these days? Well, I'm currently uh, dean of students at Lake Oconee Academy, which I love. I love the kids. I love trying to share stories with the young people and um, uh, motivate them to to want more. Um, that was kind of how I grew up. I wanted more than I saw around me. Um, and, and trying to preach that message now that um, there's nothing to stop them from being whatever they want to be uh, and accomplishing whatever it is that they want to accomplish. Well, you were, uh, and you still are, a great support and encourager of those kids, including my two kids. <laughs> and um, uh, they, have a lot of respect for you and obviously you it takes a village I would say and you were one of those uh, yeah. people who really uh, made a an impact in their lives well and thank you you know they uh, Remy and Stu they, uh, they they're special though and and after you and, and, and Ted did a phenomenal job in, in raising them and teaching them the right values and so they were easy they were a couple of these easy, easy ones that uh, didn't lack confidence and are very talented in their own right. Your coaching tenure in Colorado obviously have made a lot of difference in kids' lives, right? And I'm sure that you were still in touch with a lot of those kids that you coach today. No doubt. Uh, they have a chat line that they uh, have included me on and uh, they they tell stories. It's, that's what's fun for me to be on the line is, is that they're telling stories about things that happened when they were playing for me. Um, but, you know, we have two players that are now head coaches in the NBA, uh, Chauncey Billups uh, right. with the Portland Trailblazers and Jamal Mosley, mm -hmm. uh, who played for me for four years as the head coach of Orlando Magic. And so we've had opportunities to go and, and watch those guys play. And, and you brought Chauncey here. I met him. Yeah. What a nice gentleman. Yeah, he loves it here. And uh, we played golf. He's an avid golfer as well. And uh, Jamal is planning on coming. Uh, and, and possibly buying something here and uh, but yeah those are not just because of what they accomplished uh, with a basketball but they're great human beings right and uh, that's what I'm most proud of you you made a big difference there for for them well thank you I'd like to think that I said something that made sense right and uh, that they uh, remember today do you ever find yourself missing the coaching world and what aspects of coaching do you miss? I still like and enjoy teaching the game of basketball. I don't miss coaching so much. Uh, the platform has changed with the transfer portal, uh, with the, uh, the name, image, and likeness, NIL money that's being thrown around now. It's just, it's just changed. It's a new era. It's a new time. And um, I don't miss the coaching piece. I still enjoy watching games. I still have quite a few friends that are coaching, and uh, so I, I, I see games. But uh, right now, I'm spending a lot of time riding horses and yeah. uh, <laughs> and just having fun playing golf. Where did that love for horses come from, Coach? You know, growing up in Nashville, Tennessee, my grandmother and I, we watched westerns every day. And uh, you name it, we watched it from Bonanza, Big Valley, High Chaparral, Rifleman. We watched them all. And I just fell in love with horses. And when I went And off, that is a very <laughs> different combination, right? Yeah. From coaching basketball to riding horses. You know, it's so peaceful. I'm always fascinated with the animal. Um, as you may know, it's, uh, horses are afraid of everything. They have to be desensitized to, to, to uh, go around anything as, as, as simple as a piece of paper or can on the ground. Uh, most people think horses automatically walk through water. Well, they don't. And you have to teach horses to be comfortable with, with walking through water. And so 
I have a great uh, uh, affinity for horses and, and fascination, but, but also it's, it's a very calming time for me. It's, it's relaxing and uh, um, it's a great pastime. Right. Coach, you talked about the changes in um, college basketball, which obviously not just college ba basketball, but sports in general. But um, what can you say about uh, NFL? And did you watch the Super Bowl <laughs> last night? I did stay up yes. uh, and watch the game last night, and it really got exciting toward the end and especially the overtime yeah that yeah. was really exciting towards the end yeah, so it was um i met you in 2002 you bought a property here built a fabulous house in the golf course Thank and you. um and you chose to retire here at lake oconee so how was that transition for you so it's been great for me it was about in 2002 uh some friends coaching friends of, of mine we decided to take a golf trip the first thursday after after every mother's day right and uh so we would go just diff different places every two years and so we came here in 2002 and i just fell in love with the place and there was there, there's been so many changes the Publix wasn't here um they only had three golf courses at the time. Right. And I knew when I retired, I didn't want to play the same golf course every every day. The Ritz was not open yet. The Ritz wasn't right. open either. And, um, and so, but you had talked to my wife and I about all the things that were planned and that were coming. And certainly we believed and trusted you. And, and, and let me say this. Uh, you have been a friend uh, since 2002, and your family have supported us, and uh, we appreciate you guys as well. No, we're we're grateful for your friendship um, through the years. Definitely, you know, I, at 2002, um, my son was just born then. Uh, right, yeah, Stu was just yeah, born. Right? That's right. You, yeah, you were carrying when we first that's met. That's right. <laughs> yes. Gosh, time flies, right? Uh, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, and we've really enjoyed, and we're grateful, and we're blessed to have you and your family as uh, friends. And we've enjoyed watching your, the boys grow yeah. up. And uh, gosh, it's been a while since I've seen them. Well, you know, Ricardo, our oldest, is 35, and uh, he does computer coding. Is he still in Atlanta or? He was in Atlanta. Then he, uh, when I left Colorado in 2007, I went to Northern Illinois and he transferred there and played football. Um, but he got a job in New York and loved New York. Right. Uh, but when COVID hit, he could move anywhere. So he moved back to Boulder, Colorado, where he uh, grew up. And, um, and then Michael, our youngest, who played basketball for me at Northern Illinois, uh, he's in Atlanta and uh, has a great career going at ADP. He's in management for right. ADP, the uh, payroll processing company. Well, they were remarkable kids, I remember. Uh, so I am not surprised that they are enjoying their success right now because they were hard workers and, of course, they have great parents. Well, thank you. Well, Jennifer, you know, I have to give her a lot of credit because uh, of course, she was teaching English in, in Colorado, and now she's a guidance counselor at, at Lake Okona Academy. Um, but one of the things I told the boys when we, they were growing up was, uh, whatever we do, we protect our name. Uh, and that that last name, that last name doesn't just belong to them. It belongs to me, it belongs to their mother. And, and whatever you do, protect your name. And so I've, I've, I've used that same uh, speech here at Lake Oconee Academy and, and talking to the children about their last name and uh it's about reputation that's exactly right, right. yeah yes. and, yeah. When, and when you mess your last name up sometimes it's hard to get it back that's right and that's uh, right so and it takes a, it takes many years for you to build it up that's right? exactly right yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and that that's a really really great lesson to teach kids yeah yeah uh, and it's true in everything that you do whether it's work or just yeah i mean how you conduct yourself that's right. Every day, every day, um, you know your manners, yeah. and luckily your kids were again very <laughs> impressive kids with manners, and um, you know, and that's one thing that is important that we taught our kids, and it's nice that wherever they go, you know, up right. they're up north right now, and my son always says, you know, mom, they always say, you, 
We like the way you talk, and you're from, you must be from the South, right? <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> because you say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. I'm yeah. like, well, that's good. That's what you're supposed to that's do. That's exactly right. right. That'll, that'll go a long way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're still golfing? Still golfing. A lot? Still yeah. avid golfer and uh, love it. Uh, still playing pretty good, good, good yeah. level of golf. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine being any place that has as as many and as nice golf courses as, as Reynolds does here. I mean, to have seven and a half, soon to be eight golf courses, uh, I think is, is pretty phenomenal. It's really nice to talk to somebody like you, Coach, who's been here for that long and who really um, has seen the evolution of this place, yeah. right? I mean, right. from three golf courses without a Ritz, now you've got <laughs> the Ritz and uh, all these new people. Right. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of new young families that have moved here and moving here as you've witnessed yeah. over the years. And um, I think that even though this community is growing, it's still has that small town charm and it's it's still very special and of course the amenities the first class amenities are yeah. that really help draw people here but I think it's that community feel that makes this place special it, I agree it, it, it is a special place uh, as you mentioned in 2002 when we came the hospital wasn't here right the school wasn't here and I think for for the school and the hospital to be brought in into the plan, it just brought a younger clientele of, of uh, Reynolds families and uh, it's, it served them well, served the community well. Right. Well, thank you so much for being here. I always enjoy seeing you and talking to you and you. Um, don't work too hard <laughs> <laughs> or don't golf too much. Don't golf too much. <laughs> that one I won't try to That's keep. That's right. I won't yes. try to keep that one. I will try to keep don't work too hard. Yeah, no. And uh, always a pleasure to see you, Coach. And tell Jennifer I said hello. Do the same. Tell Ted and the kids. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.